visual effects artist and uh, a filmmaker. Um, I've been doing visuals for quite some time. I would say maybe uh, about 10 years. Um, I used to want to be in films and be an actress, and that's kind of how everything kind of got started for me. Um, and since I didn't know how to get into it, um, I taught myself, basically on YouTube. I watched thousands and thousands of tutorials on how to do certain things, and I didn't have money. So, so the best way was um, just try and figure it out uh, freeway. <laughs> I couldn't afford someone to do the visuals and to do the things for me. So basically, to make a long story short, um, yeah, I just watched tons of tutorials and taught myself how to do some visual effects. Um, I'm trying to get some of the YouTube following on so you guys can see some of the stuff that I, I do. So I'm sure you guys have an idea what visual effects are. Um, it could be compositing, green screen, blue screen, um, matte paintings, which are really cool to do. It's basically when you um, kind of Photoshop the background and make things move around it, which is um, how I started out, actually, because I couldn't afford uh, or did not know how to do 3D modeling at the time. I, I eventually learned, but my first uh, visual effects project, I'm going to show you guys that now in a second. Go to some visuals here. I'm trying to go over here so you guys can see some of the first effects. Okay, here's one. So this was all done green screen. I shot this on my iPhone. Um, and everything is rendered in Z space. And it's me basically in my kitchen. <laughs> and it's very nice. So I take a lot of cosplay and combine it with visual effects to try to make something uh, unique. put a breakdown on this video as well. Yes, I did. <laughs> And that was one of my um, first uh, visual effects. Um, I eventually learned how to do 3D modeling and um, animation as well. Um, and eventually, I met up um, with an individual that wanted to do Power Ranger films. So from there, any Power Ranger fans? <laughs> Have you guys heard of Power Rangers? Power Rangers Unworthy? Power Rangers Unworthy? It's a new series that we had that came out. So it's been actually uh, pretty good. Started out with just a very small crew of us, um, all friends, and um, all of us had the same dream about being a filmmaker and um, actors. So we all wear uh, so many hats within this. Um, we're all the actors, we're all stunt people, um, and eventually it grew into a, a team. And I'll show you guys some of that in a, in a second too. Um, we all shared similar interests. One person wanted to be a stunt person. Um, me wanted to be an actress and a visual effects artist, another person wanted to be a director, and we all ended up just kind of collabing together and building this awesome team. And it eventually grew to a, a huge team. Um, eventually, at one point, I think maybe about two years ago, I came on set and I saw a whole staff of like 30 to 40 people <laughs> working when it started out with just four or five of us. Um, and I'll show you some of the BTS from that particular set. Thank you very much. Thank you. 
Olha lá, meu sol martial arts, esse sol martial arts perigo, não sei. <laughs> that particular day. Um, but that's basically, I'm involved with the set process, um, the costume design. Um, basically, I assist and direct in this production as well. And then it gets edited and sent to me, and I'll show you guys what the final result looks like once we're done. So that particular episode is this one. This is after about weeks of editing. I swear, I will avenge you.
so that episode is out. It's, it's doing pretty good. Um, if you guys want to check it out, that's the arbiter. I don't know if you guys... Uh... Yes. So that's what the final result looks like um, after weeks of editing. <laughs> visuals take some time, um, but they're a lot of fun to do. I don't know if any, uh, any of you guys are interested in visual effects. Have you done anything like that, or design work, or anything in that sense? Um, but it's... It's a, it's a lot of fun. I enjoy doing it. I've always, um, I've always loved how you can take something and change it to whatever your imagination can create. Um, but yeah, that's one of the final results. We're currently working on um, episode five, and we're doing also, um, what is it, um, Star Wars. We're doing a Star Wars version of Power Rangers as well. So that should be really soon. I'm at, currently editing that. I'll probably start streaming on Twitch so you guys, if, if anybody's interested in learning how to edit, um, you can follow my Twitch, um, Beautiful Diz, and I'm going to go through step by step on how to edit. Um, also, you don't need a lot of money to do these things. Technology has changed so much now that you can do things on small budgets. I have episodes that we filmed, that was actually a professional crew shot, but there's episodes that we filmed on iPhones, um, just out in the woods with no budget. We made the costumes, um, basically just straight iPhone, and came up with ideas on how to do that. And that episode, I believe, is probably one of my favorite ones. This is uh, Ninja, Ninja's Oath. Let me see if I can find the trailer and not the full episode. There should be one. All right, well, maybe we'll go to the full episode and I'll forward to the better parts of the episode. So you guys have an idea of what it looks like. But you can film on an iPhone and actually get pretty good footage nowadays. It's not like how things used to be when you actually need these huge professional cameras. to a good part. Yeah. 
I take a part of the visual parts to the lots, but I have to be the most fully on this particular side. The great ninja, and I will not be the last ninjetti. So I don't know if you guys saw the original ninjetti when he calls the spirit animals. That's basically what this is, my version of it. So it picks up with me actually as Aisha. This is so awesome. And the guy who plays him is really cool too. So fun fact about that, I'm playing Aisha. Um, and he's going to be my teacher. So actually in real life, the person that plays him is actually going to be my teacher to train me so I can actually play the role. <laughs> so we're actually going to have the student-disciple type of relationship in the show. And in real life. So that's going to be an interesting thing. So he survived, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if he survived, you're going to find out. It's called The Last Ninjani for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you guys have any questions on um, visual effects, on how to get started, or, or any interest in it? Or I did the marketing of it, just like promoting it. Promoting the, the series? Yeah. Um, For some reason, it. it Took off on its own. I don't, I don't even. It, it got a huge fan base. So like, it's a concept. That's what I'm asking. Like, you know, promotion wise, some people have built concepts and they don't want to take off right away. Yeah, yeah. So yours yeah, just took off right away. This is the second channel. The first channel had millions of views too. We parted ways with the first people who were doing it, um, and we ended up doing it on our own, which is why I had to do the visual effects. Like, learned the visual effects and did everything, and we picked up. This is probably our slowest episode. The other one has four million. This one has two point three million. Mm -hmm. That's a slow episode. That's, that's, that's a slow episode. That's a 26K. We blame it on the, the we blame it on the iPhone. That's what we. That's a slow oh, step. Yeah, like, the quality to me is just as good. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's, still, great. it's still it's still great like viewing wise. You know. What I saying? thought it was awesome viewing wise. It's one of my favorite episodes. But there's no um, formula for that. I don't believe sometimes things do well that you don't expect, and things don't do well that you think is going to be great. That's the funny thing. Did with you expect me to do this well? Hmm? Did you expect me to do this well? I wanted, this particular episode I wanted to take off because it's my favorite episode. I think the whole but series. The whole series. Did you expect it to do what I was doing now? Not as good as it's doing now. Like, Did it's got it? its own fan base. Like, it's got to the point where I'm on vacation and I'll post something on social media and someone will send me a message like, Great Mountain, get back to editing. And I'm like, bro, you're serious? <laughs> you following me to critique what I'm doing on my personal time because they want to see the next episode. It's gotten, but it takes so long to make these episodes. Especially since it's only a handful of us doing it. It's only two people editing. I'm doing all the visual, and another individual is doing the actual editing 
the episode. So he edits the video, sends it to me, and I do all the visuals. So it came, it started taking off from our first one? So you it took off from the first episode. The first episode, I think, did two or three million uh, in the first episode, and then we switched channels. And we started this channel with zero subscribers. And within the last four years, it took off. And everyone, I guess, was looking for it. We re uploaded episode one on this channel. That's when it has the porn the movie, the first one. And when we re uploaded it, it, it did just as good. And we continue to do episode two. And now there's a demand for it. So we just can't produce it as fast as we would like because we, everyone has day jobs. <laughs> we're hoping we get to the point where no one needs day jobs. And we think we're almost got there to some degree because we're going to start paying people um, during episode five and episode six because um, we need people to take off to actually do some of this stuff. And we love the volunteer work, but people. You know, people need to, to get money. They, they so, need bread, you know, bread. Yes, they exactly. Play. And we're glad that we're getting to a level where we can actually do that now. Um, but it started out so small and as an idea and a dream and just a group of friends. And when I show you guys that behind the scenes, that's those are people who just kind of jump on out of nowhere. And literally, it was like I just went on a trip one day and I came back and I'm like, who are these people? <laughs> there was a, a staff person over there, there was another person who was who was doing the the, uh, the stunt team and they, people had name tags and I'm walking around like who are you? I'm like who am I? <laughs> I'm one of the original people. Yeah. But it's great that it's gotten to that level and so many people want to to you know work with us. Um, but yeah, it's a lot of fun. Uh, filmmaking is great and it's it's been one of my dreams and it, I don't even think it matters what part I'm playing in at this point if it's an actress or if it's behind the scenes or it's helping other people with costumes or props. Cause I do, I do all those type of things. They came up with content? No, uh, my friend did. And I just got involved because he needed a visual effects person. He's like, how good are you at visuals? And I'm like, uh, I watched a few tutorials. <laughs> and I was like, he says, okay, well, can you get this done in two weeks? I'm like, two weeks? What do you mean two weeks? I didn't watch that many tutorials before I could finish that quick. Now you did but a good job though. So it's like, thank it's you. Like, um, but it's a big difference from episode one to the current episode where we're at now. The actor who's about to be a mentor, I'm sorry. The mm -hmm. actor who's about to be a mentor, is he a practitioner of martial arts? He's a martial artist. Um, okay. That's how it's all been happening. We're meeting people who are actually smart people and people who actually do this for a living, who volunteer to do this for us. Um, and you'll see them on like major television shows and they'll be in our episodes too. Now, the only reason why I recognize because I saw something that clicked with me because I'm a practitioner. Oh, awesome. Yeah, so I just saw something. I was like, oh. Looks like I'll stop and let it go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, a lot of these people are actually they're they're trained. Um, so that's why I said there's a big difference between the first episode we were all kind of just trying to wing it and actually getting involved with um, a prof that was a professional camera crew of the people who were involved in episode four. And it's weird because every there's a different person that shot each episode. You can kind of see a different style or a different quality based off of that. But um, we've all grown and learned from each person we've interacted with. So working with a uh, person from episode one all the way to the current episode, it's been a big learning experience. And we've gotten to the point now where I, I know how to light a scene to some degree because I've been around it so much. And I learned how to, to, to do some of the stunt work or what's required because I've been around it a lot. You know, so you eventually grow um, you know, from, from just being around it and learning. So that's, it's, it's an awesome thing to do if, someone, if you guys are into filmmaking. Um, I would suggest volunteering and doing things to kind of, yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> um, I, just, I have a couple questions. Uh -huh. I love for you to finish with your statement. Oh, no, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. Um, well, one, I was wondering for that episode, did you use an iPhone tripod? No, we, um, hands? Hand, yeah. Wow. Yes. Well, hands. Stay wow. steady. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yes, I use After Effects. That is my home base for most of the things. 
Um, it's, it's actually not that difficult to learn. I thought it was, and it's like I opened it and I was like, what is this? <laughs> it's so many buttons. But if you use Photoshop, which a lot of people do now, um, there's so many similarities to certain things in there that you get used to the setup. And the tools are almost the same type of things for a lot of these things. And there's tutorials for everything. Um, like the great, I think the first thing I learned was ring swings um, in After Effects because it, you find out it's a button. <laughs> like you literally pick keying and then you click that and you're like, oh, oh, that did it. And then eventually you learn how to tune it better and how to light and how, and you also learn how to shoot better because then you make mistakes. It's all a trial and error thing. I've shot so much footage that didn't pan out well that I knew better next time and not have that harsh shadow behind me, don't stand too close to the screen. Those are just things you eventually learn and you eventually get better by making mistakes. Um, and still even now, I was, the, I'm, I'm editing our current episode. Um, right before I left the house, they forgot to put trackers on everything. <laughs> and they shot with heavy fall. So that's going to be a big thing for me to fix, but you find ways to kind of go around it, and hopefully you find ways to go around it, because some things are, are you know, they're difficult to track. But with AI and a lot of these, this technology that's come out, it's making so much easier. Um, like rotoscoping, I don't know if you guys are familiar with that term, um, it's an AI thing. Before you used to have to sit there and click on it and go around and mask something, but, yes, frame my frame, and I heard rotoscoping, which came out a while ago, and it's considered AI, and I didn't know it was considered AI, so was, I was doing some research, I'm like, oh, that's been out for a couple, <laughs> a couple of years. But yeah, you draw around it, and it picks it up, and it, it masks everything, and that's something that saves a lot more time. So yeah, there's tools that have come out. There's also plugins for things, and um, yeah, it's gotten so much easier, I think, than um, back in the days when you would have to learn a lot. It's almost like even like web design. It's web design, and you would have to write all these codes. And now it's like all these other programs came out. I was like a master of Dreamweaver, and I was like, oh, I'm invested in Dreamweaver. And I'm like, oh, this is a bad investment. <laughs> no one uses Dreamweaver anymore. <laughs> But yes, there's there's a lot of um, things that will make that process easier for you. Uh, when you do VFX for something like this project, oh, not this anymore, it's just went away. Uh, <laughs> something like this project, uh, do you go into it with like a really clear vision or do you relax? It depends. Um, with a project of this size, yes. They definitely give me a, a workout sheet where um, they have something in particular. Um, the problem I run into most is people don't shoot it correctly with certain things, and like I said, you have to kind of find a way around it. Um, but yes, I do have a list of tasks with my own personal projects. Sometimes, no. I, uh, I know I can kind of come up with different things. Like there's a, a video I have where, I don't know what I was doing, it was on the beach, and I wanted this to do a visual effect on something. And, um, oh, I think the idea was I wanted the green screen to blow away. So I got up and I walked away, and I ended up changing that whole scene into a video of Ian's head. You know, Ted, the TV show, <laughs> the movie? It ended up being something totally different than what it was. Because sometimes I'll go around and I'll remix things or come up with an idea with whatever I have afterwards. And I don't have a solid plan because I'll find a great location and just want to shoot something with that particular location. And I'll film whatever, and then I'll edit it later. But with these type of things, you probably need to have um, some type of idea of what it is. And we don't always go with the idea that's written sometimes. Sometimes it's not possible. Sometimes something better is possible. Like even that sequence I showed you guys with um, the, the ape and the wolf and all those type of things, that was not shot with that type of intention. It was shot with an idea of something like that, but those animals weren't supposed to be coming out of that. I came up with that idea because it just felt like it's something that cool it, it could possibly work. But they were supposed to be flying around or something in that sense. So yeah, you can wing it. Sometimes you, you can't. It depends on the scenario. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes. Um, I realized 3D modeling is a whole different ballgame. That is something totally different. There, there's so many different jobs and visuals with people. Who, and like when you get on major jobs, like working for Marvel or, or like DC, there's departments for things. Uh, at least when they hire, but sometimes they hire outside, out staff. But there'll be departments for people who just rotoscope, for people who just composite, for people who just do this, that, and the other. So 3D modeling is a whole nother ball game. I dabbled in it to some degree, but literally it was like when I opened the After Effects for the first time, it was like a can of worms. <laughs> so, oh, 3D modeling is when you design a, um, a character. 
I have a couple of, I can show you guys an example of some of the things that I've done um, that I did not show you guys yet. This is an example, this is probably not the best example, but there is a good model in this particular one. So the spider is a green model. So this was shot in Mexico on my iPhone. I didn't know what I was going to do. I just filmed myself because it was a key location. And I said, you know what? I thought I was like, oh, I have to drive it. I know people look at me like I'm crazy because when I'm walking down the street doing weird things with weird clothes on, I'm like, no, you don't understand. It's going to be driving there. <laughs> so this was shot in Mexico.
So hopefully uh, we we're doing this this summer. We have a couple of uh, some guests coming out that I'm not going to reveal quite yet. Um, that's going to be in an episode, but uh, let's see if there's anything else that's real. I think there's one more that I can bring out. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> what a great case. <laughs> yeah, I did some short films, that's what that is. It's not some visuals on that. Part, but you know, I don't mind 
digging in there and getting my hands dirty. So it, it's, you know, tip for that. But there are so many things that actually do cut the time when you don't have to worry about doing that. Like Rose Hogan is a perfect example of that. Like who wants to sit there and go play by play? Nobody wants to do that. That's like the dreadful job of visual effects. So every visual effects knows that term like uh, <laughs> Rose Hogan, <laughs> the masking. Any other questions? <laughs> guys. Well, thank you so much. Um, my name is Beautiful Biz. You can follow me on social media. Um, like I said, if you guys want to uh, learn anything, um, hit me up. Feel free if you're interested or any suggestions if you guys uh, want to have on anything in particular, help or anything like that, please, please feel free to hit me up. <laughs>